Hi guys! Kumusta? It's Sophia from Utak POS and for today's video, we will be learning the back office. Now, this is part 2 of our tutorial guide. So, pag hindi nyo pa nakikita yung part 1 or are in need of a refresher, feel free to head over to that video first as linked in the description. But if you're ready, let's begin. To visit the back office, open a browser preferably Google Chrome or Safari, and go to utak.io. Click on Login and enter the same login credentials you did for the POS tablet. Once signed in, you can view your back office dashboard. Here, you'll see your sales reports for the day, provided that your tablet is connected to the internet. This includes your total sales in pesos, total number of transactions, total number of items sold, total refunds, sales by payment type, total discount, cost of goods if inputted, and total profit or your sales less cost. You may also view your sales per hour, per day, and per month in order to view your business's peak hours, days, or seasons. You may also view the above information for a custom time frame by selecting the starting and ending date and time of your choosing. Scrolling a little further down lets you view a pie chart of your peso sales for a chosen time frame per category, per top 5 best selling items, per cashier, and per payment type. A scrollable list of your total items sold is also available and you may click on the labels as shown to order them in ascending or descending order. In the Transactions tab, you can download all your sales reports. A preview of the data you'll be able to extract is available here, and there are four types of reports to choose from. The details report will give you a comprehensive breakdown of the details of each transaction, and online orders are marked with a phone icon. Customer details are also viewable from here. The transactions report will cover other relevant info per transaction as well, including the cost and profit per transaction. The daily reports gives you a summary of all your daily sales totals. The formula for this report is total minus costs minus expenses equals profit. Keep in mind that discounts have already been factored into the total. Finally, the monthly report will give you a summary of your total sales per month. For your details and transaction reports, you may also extract a report for a chosen 12 a.m. to 12 a.m. time frame only. To extract April 1 data, for example, input April 1 as your start date and April 2 as your end date. Click Go once done, then press Download to extract the spreadsheet report. The Reports tab is where you'll be able to view your sales data laid out in visual charts. Under the Charts tab, you'll be able to view your profit and the cost of your goods sold for your top 5 best-selling items over the last 7 days. The red-orange portion represents your profit for each item, while the light-orange portion represents your cost of goods. The circle chart to the left will summarize your best-selling item's share of total sales, and hovering above the circles you see opens up a quick view of your sales for that particular item over the last 7 days. The bar chart besides this gives you a 7-day view of your peso sales per category, and likewise hovering over this chart lets you view the category corresponding to each peso value. A line graph version of this data can be found right below. You'll also see your 7-day peso sales by cashier and payment type as well as your peso sales by hour and weekday. In this chart, each column of circles represents an hour of the day while each row represents a day of the week. A green circle indicates relatively high sales for that hour on that day of the week, while an orange circle indicates moderate sales. A red circle indicates low sales while a black circle means that there were no sales at all. This chart is useful for pinpointing your peak hours during which you may want to introduce promos or assign more staff on duty. Scrolling back up next to the Charts tab, you'll see your product mix. This is where you'll be able to view your total sales per category as well as per item, both in quantity and in peso amount. You may view your sales data for today, yesterday, the last 30 days, 
the first of the month up to the current day, and last month's data. In order to extract your product mix values for a custom time frame, you may also use the date filters above. You may also click on download to extract a CSV report of your product mix data. The items tab is where you'll be able to add, remove, and edit the items in your menu or product list. You'll see item view and table view options. If you'll only be adding a couple of items, we recommend using item view. From here, you can add a new category or add an item to an existing one. To add an item, click on the orange plus icon, then input the item name. Add a price to the right and an optional cost to the left. In order to delete the item, simply click on the trash icon next to it. You may also add options such as sizes and flavors for certain items that require them. To do this, click on the green plus icon, type in the names, then add in the costs and prices for each. If you'd like to make significant changes to your menu, you may use table view. To add an item, simply add row or add five rows, and the index column to the left will show you how many rows there are already. To add an item, simply input the category name, item name, any options, price, and cost. You may also input the modifier set number you'd like to attach to that item, if any. For more information on modifiers and how to use them, you may refer to our How to Add Modifiers video in our video training library. To add a second option to an item, simply copy the category name and item name, then paste these to the same columns on the next row. You may then input the second option name as well as its price, cost, and modifier set number if any. Keep in mind that all items have to have prices in order to prevent errors while using the app, so if you're unsure of the price, input zero as a placeholder. You may also right-click and insert row to add rows in between existing items, as well as right-click and remove row to delete an item you no longer need. Numbering your category names will also indicate the order in which these categories will appear on the UTAC register from left to right. Without this numbering, your categories will default to alphabetical order. You may also long press on an item's index number and drag it up or down depending on where you want it to appear on the register. Take note that the items on top will appear first. Once done, simply save changes. In the Inventory tab, you'll be able to monitor your stocks in real time. There are three inventory types, which you'll be able to set from the back office settings. The first type is ingredients-based, which means that your staff view from the POS tablet is the same as the owner's view from the back office. The second is ingredients input-based, which means the view of your inventory on the POS tablet is limited, and staff can only view how much they added to the stocks that day. In this type of inventory, your staff can also input their physical or manual stock count, which you'll then be able to see from the back office. If you're on ingredients or ingredients input base, you'll have to start by encoding your inventory. Simply type in the ingredient name, amount in stock, and unit of measurement, such as grams or pieces. Then click on Add Ingredient. You may also upload an Excel file and more information on how this is done is available on our How to Encode Ingredients video. Once you've encoded all your ingredients, the next step is to link each ingredient to your items. Click on Link Ingredients then click on the plus icon next to the desired item. Choose the ingredient you want by scrolling or typing it in to search. Under Quantity, input how many units of that ingredient should deduct from your stocks each time one unit of that item is sold. Do this repeatedly until you've linked all ingredients. Once done, you'll notice that every time an item is sold, each ingredient linked to it will deduct in the quantities you've indicated. To remove a linked ingredient, simply click on the trash icon next to it. Now let's run through each column under Inventory. Beginning today is your stock count at the beginning of each day. This should be the same as yesterday's final inventory. You may edit the beginning value as needed. Added represents the stocks added today. To do this, 
simply input the value in the space to the right, then click on the plus icon. Inputting a negative number here will deduct your stocks instead. The value under deducted shows how much of that ingredient was deducted from stocks due to sales, while current is your stock count at the moment. The value under current will carry over to beginning today at 12 midnight. If you are an ingredients input based, there is an additional column for staff input, which is the manual count your staff inputted from the tablet. You may compare the staff input to the current stock to check for significant discrepancies. You may also download a CSV report of your inventory, and this report is downloadable for the last three days only. A third inventory type called retail is available as well. The difference being that in retail, no linking and encoding of ingredients is required as the items in your menu are the items in your inventory as well, and one unit of the item will deduct from your stocks for every one unit of that item is sold. From the Staff tab, you'll be able to view your staff selfies over the past couple days as well as download a report of their total hours worked per day. The cash drawer tab is where you'll be able to view the cash drawer values on the POS side, as well as view the expenses inputted by your staff on certain dates. A historical report of your expenses is also downloadable from here. The settings tab is where you'll be able to input your business details, including the email address to which your daily sales report will be sent. Under daily sales time, you'll be able to choose which time you'll be receiving the report, which will cover your sales for the last 24 hours. You may also view and edit your refund pin, screen lock pin, and the cashier pins from here, all of which should be four-digit numbers not beginning in zero. You'll also be able to tick which tabs will be hidden from the staff under the screen lock pin, as well as change your account password. Under Online Store Details, You'll also be able to edit the information viewable on your online store page, which we'll be covering next. The process of setting up your online store page is easy. Simply fill in the online store details, then head to the Items tab. From here, you'll be able to upload pictures for each item in your menu by clicking on the square and selecting a file from your computer, or dragging the file to the square instead. Make sure that your file is 300 KB and below so that it quickly and properly loads on the store page. Once done, switch to Table View to tick any items that are unavailable and should therefore not appear on the website. You may also add a short description for each item. And you're done! Simply enter your store URL into the browser search bar, and you should be able to see all your changes implemented on the store page automatically. And that's it for our back office training. If you'd like to go in-depth on certain tabs, you can visit our YouTube channel and watch our videos there, or you can also press on the help icon underneath the settings tab of the back office to arrive at our video training library. Good luck and happy selling!